Hi everybody. This is webinar number eight in my Power of Attorney webinar series. We're on to the home stretch. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about dealing with attorneys, how to find the right attorney. There's actually two associations that I'm going to refer you to where you can find qualified attorneys to help you create your documents. We're going to talk about how to avoid potential future and current conflicts of interest and undo influence if you have siblings or anybody in your family that might question these documents, your being appointed as agent, or even the will of your loved one. We're also going to just go through just some steps to prepare you. We've been talking about these in all of this webinar series. So, so that you're prepared to save time at the attorney's office because time is money. And I'll share an estate planning document from an actual law office so you can see the information they request. Much of this is already in the financial care plan document and the medical care plan document that I know if you watched webinar number seven, you went to my website page and you downloaded these documents so you could see what information you need to complete. So now that you've done most of the hard work in the previous seven webinars, Again, you're in the home stretch of getting all these documents done. A link to the online program is below if you found this video on its own and you don't even know about the program. Check out the link below, click on it, all the webinars will be there. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I'm a caregiving expert and advocate of more than 20 years who has served as a professional fiduciary in the roles of agent under medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney, guardian, conservator, personal representative of the estate, and trustee. Please like this video, follow my YouTube channel so that other people can find hope, help, and support. Your participation really does matter, even if you just post a little comment and say, hey Pamela, thanks for the video, thanks for the information, I appreciate it. Your comments help other people find these videos, and your participation really, really does make a difference. So I ask for your help in that matter. So let's talk about creating the power of attorney document, right, which we've been talking about in all of these webinars. All of this planning that you're doing makes creating these documents for the person who's going to create them, your attorney, the law firm, easier. Because honestly, by the time you meet with the attorney, you're going to have all the questions answered. You're actually going to probably surprise them because you are so prepared. And that's going to save you time and it's going to save you money. Okay, so... Again, remember, click on the page link below, download the documents I'm going to mention. So in this webinar, we're going to talk just very quickly about, you know, why do I need an attorney to draft a document versus using an online document? How do you find that qualified attorney? Other things you could think about or should think about before you pick up the phone to call that attorney's office. And how do you schedule an interview with an attorney and then meet them and get your documents completed, okay? So attorney drafted versus online forms. Every state is different. The rules in every state is different. So if you use a generic form, it may or may not apply to everything in your state, right? Using a standardized power of attorney document, honestly, it's better than nothing. If you can't afford an attorney today, but you're going to save up and you're going to go to one maybe in a year or two years, at least do something, right? Pull a standardized attorney form off the website. Make sure it applies to your state, though. Um, so that at least you have something that will work in the event of an emergency until you can make a better plan. Now I'll tell you because of my background in the role of fiduciary and as a care manager for so many years, my personal preference and my recommendation is that you do find an attorney to do these documents for you. Even if yours are very simple, the rules change all the time. Information changes in your states. The last thing that you want to do is have a document that turns out to be like not really valuable or not really usable when you need it, because that does happen. So finding an attorney, having an attorney who drafts your documents means that you can add very specific information about your wishes. And this is really, really important if your family is a little unusual or there's some unexpected circumstances or there have been problems in the past or maybe you don't trust your kids or... Maybe you don't trust your spouse. You know, there's all kinds of reasons to hire an attorney to help you. And again, there are legal forms online. Do what you need to do. 
You can make your own decision between using an attorney or an online form. And it may be that you start with an online form because you want to move slowly. And then at some point, you take that and all the other information to the attorney and have them draft your documents when you feel like you're super organized or you have the money or it's the right time. Or maybe you just, you know what you want and you're like, Pamela, I don't even need to think about it. Show me the two associations. Let me go find an attorney. I'm just going to get this done because I want it off my list, right? So choice of how to proceed is yours. Information in the power of attorney documents. Law firms have a variety of standardized templates that they can use that they update based on your particular situation. Now, I've said this many times and I'm going to repeat it again. I'm going to be like that squeaky little wheel, right? It's important to use an attorney who specializes in estate planning, elder law, and probate. Don't use a divorce attorney or some friend who's an attorney because you want them to do your documents and they're going to be free and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Think about this, okay? If you have a back problem, are you going to go see a back doctor or are you going to go see a heart doctor or a lung doctor or a doctor who deals with feet, right? No, you want to go to the back doctor. It's the same thing with an attorney. Go to an attorney who specializes in the thing that you want to do. Saves you time, much easier, less rework, less worry. Just as friends don't or should not let friends who are drunk drive a car. Friends who have attorneys who don't specialize in this particular part of law should not ask them or allow them to draft their documents. Do not take a shortcut with the most important decisions and aspects of your life. Okay? So, where do you find a qualified attorney? There are associations of attorneys, I'm going to give you information for two and share information about them, who've made a lot of extra effort to become certified in estate planning and trusts and elder law and in probate. Okay? It's truly a specialty. Now, if your parents already have their documents created, you can start with their attorney. The documents need to be updated. If that attorney is qualified to do it, they can do it or you can find somebody else. But if you're starting at the beginning, these two associations are a great place to start. Now, you also might have a local bar association in your state that has a probate or a trust and estates group. Uh, for a long time, I was a member of the Denver Bar Association probate and elder law group. Very valuable association. So you could contact your local bar association and ask for some references there. So two certifying organizations, NELF.org, No Egg Long Frank, NELF, right? National Elder Law Foundation, who has a certification called Certified Elder Law Attorney. And their website has a link where you can search for these attorneys who have this designation called CELA. Certified Elder Law Attorney, right? Now, CELAs, it's a lot of extra effort. It's a lot of extra work to get this designation. So depending on where you live, if you live in a big city, probably going to be Certified Elder Law Attorneys. If you live out in the country, probably not, okay? But so the good news is I got a second organization I can refer you to, okay? This one is called NALA. No Apple Egg Law Apple, N A E L A dot com. It's the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. This association also has other guidelines and rules. Some attorneys are a member of both associations, right? So go to both of these, type in your zip code, search around, go to the attorney's websites, look at it, okay? There should be a profile page with the background information of the attorney that includes their educational background, their specific areas of practice, information relative to, you know, do they do estate planning? Are they a litigation attorney? Some websites offer uh, an ability to like chat with a chat bot, right? Or a real person. Now, attorneys, most attorneys will give you like a 15 minute free consultation or you can talk to their um, somebody in the office who works on consultations and screens people. Because believe it or not, there's a screening process, right? There's something called conflict of interest. So if I call an attorney and I say, hey, I need you to represent me on this issue, they're going to be like, okay, who else is involved? Blah, blah, blah. 
because they need to check for conflicts to see if they've ever represented these other people or if they've done work for these other people, right? So let's say that maybe your brother or sister used this elder law firm. That might be a conflict. Or maybe your parents used this elder law firm. Or maybe you're filing for something else in the company that you're upset with the attorney represented them before. That's a conflict. They're going to have to refer you to somebody else. But in most cases, they can accept your case. So they have to check for potential conflicts. Okay, again, could be a prior representation of somebody in the family, a company, another person, something to do with the family. So I want to talk about undue influence, which is something that most people don't think about until it's way too late, right? So it's good to use separate attorneys, like if your parents have an attorney to draft their documents and you're getting your documents done, it's really good to use separate attorneys so that there can be no like, well, you know, you use this attorney, so you forced mom and dad to use that attorney because that attorney likes you and they should have had a separate attorney. You're not going to believe the stuff that comes up when, honestly, problems happen and your family members get upset and they think you're doing bad things and they think that you're doing wrong things, right? Or maybe you were named as power of attorney and your siblings are upset because you found the attorney that helped your parents do their documents and you forced them to appoint you and that attorney was involved and blah, 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 blah. So let me just do a couple of quick definitions from like a legal dictionary, right? So a conflict of interest arises when the considerations of one party goes against the best interest of another, right? So, so let's say a lawyer couldn't represent two people who are going through a divorce, right? Because who are they going to choose? Who are they going to believe, right? If they're representing both people, one person wins, one person loses, right? They always don't come out even, okay? And so this undue influence is the amount of like pressure or influence one person has over another to make them do something. And that could be appoint someone as agent under power of attorney. It could be to execute a will. It could be to leave, you know, assets like a house to somebody versus one other person. And so the key element here is that the influence is so great and so substantial that the person who's being influenced, right, doesn't feel like they can do what they want to do or give their opinion or disagree with this person, right? And that can happen in situations of, of elder abuse, right? If your brother or sister is living with your parent and they have daily influence over them, your parent may be afraid to speak up or to not appoint them as power of attorney if they bring an attorney over to the house or to give them the house and the will. There's all kinds of crazy things that happen in families and even in will contests. So let me just tell you a story. So Pete visits his aunt Agnes and she's sick and, and he's like, oh, auntie, I think you should leave your you know, mansion and your property to me. I'm the one who always comes and visits you. You know, your son, he's 2,000 miles away and he rarely calls and he just never visits and I'm always the one who's here. So, so I think I should get your property, right? And, and then, so she's not agreeing, but then one day he shows up and he threatens to stop visiting her. And unfortunately, he's the only one that visits her. Her son doesn't visit, other family doesn't visit, so she's pretty isolated. And if Pete didn't show up, she's thinking, I probably would be in a lot of trouble because I don't have anybody else besides Pete to take care of me, right? And I'm lonely, and Pete's mad at me. He's telling me that I don't appreciate his help, and you know, I need to give him my mansion and my property and all this kind of stuff. And so eventually Pete brings over an attorney. And Pete tells the attorney that this is what Auntie Agnes wants. And Auntie Agnes is there and she's thinking, gosh, I can't really say no because Pete's like going to not stop seeing me. So I have to sign these documents, right? And so Pete, instead of the family, inherits all this stuff. But yet there was a degree of undue influence that wasn't necessarily noticed by this attorney. So these are things you got to talk about. These are things that you need to know about, right? There are two more ideas that I share because until this happens in your family, you're really going to think that this is even possible. And then when it happens, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, why didn't we think of this? Why didn't we think that this was even possible to happen? Okay? So next, scheduling, interviewing, meeting with an elder law attorney. 
Once you have looked at the two associations or contacted a bar association or got a good recommendation from someone else, you've looked at the website, you think you got a good match, you pick up the phone and you ask a lot of questions, okay? So you call to explain that you want to do some estate planning, you're looking for an attorney that can do medical financial power of attorney, living will, will, or trust, right? They do the conflict check, no issues, they can move forward, you're all good. So, and you could say something like, well, you know, I don't expect my estate planning process to have any issues and I'm pretty organized and I've collected all these informations. However, you know, I've heard of some difficult situations, so maybe here's some questions that I want to ask. How many years has this attorney practiced estate planning or probate or elder law? It would be good to have somebody who has, you know, more than five years experience. Ten would be wonderful. Next question, on average, how many plans like this does this attorney complete in a 12-month period? How many have they done in the last year? Does the attorney have experience with guardianships and conservatorships if that becomes necessary? Does the attorney have experience with contested parties or estate plans or litigation? You want to know that if you have a problem, is this attorney going to go to court to fight for you or do they not do litigation? Do they only do like the estate planning and they're going to refer you somewhere else for litigation? Depending on your family situation, if you have a great family, it may not be a problem. Honestly, if you have a crazy family or there's a lot of drama, you're probably going to want somebody who also litigates so you don't have to go find another attorney. So basically what you're asking is, does this attorney have court and trial experience? How many court hearings on average do they go to in a year? How many contested hearings have they been to in the past year? Does the attorney have experience with mediation? Sometimes courts want mediation before parties go to court and a decision is made. Does the attorney work with professional fiduciaries that I can interview if I need some help with medical care plans or medical decision making or some financial stuff or I need somebody to appoint because I don't trust my family members. Does the attorney have a list of professional fiduciaries that he or she works with that I can interview, right? Then fees, like how much is this going to cost me? Simple estate plan, do they have a template that they use? You know, very simple. If it's complicated, what's the hourly rate? Give me a range so that I know. And then my favorite question of all time, is there anything that I should know that I didn't ask you? It's a great question. So on the page, on my website, where this video also resides, along with 10 other videos and sections for this Power of Attorney webinar course, right? There is what I call an estate planning questionnaire. And I actually got this from a law firm that no longer exists, but it'll give you an idea. So you have my care plan, my medical care plan, and my financial care plan. This will give you an idea of a list of things that an attorney also might ask you for. Now, many of these are in those care plans, but if you have a complicated family, if you have a lot of assets, if you own land and companies and oil leases and all kinds of stuff, this document can give you an idea of what those other questions might be. Again, so that when you show up, you got this on a piece of paper, it's organized, you're not having to think about it. They plug it in. It's all good. You saved a lot of time and money. Okay? So the purpose of providing you with this extra document is just to give you an idea of forms that attorneys are going to give you. Why not know in advance? Why not be prepared in advance? The more knowledge you have, the easier this whole thing is. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. I am a caregiving expert and advocate. Again, been doing this for 20 years have served in all of these roles that you are going to serve in as a family member or even as a professional fiduciary. Please again, like my YouTube channel, follow these videos, and please comment, even if it's only to say, hey, thanks for the video. Your comments matter. Your comments rise or raise these videos so that they can be shown to more people on YouTube so that people can find the hope and the help and support that they're looking for. Your participation really does make a difference. Thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you in another video or another webinar. And remember, click below to get to the main webinar page for all of these Power of Attorney videos. Thanks for being here. I'll see you again. See you all again very soon.